Hello, I'm Isabel Spradlin of AbdominalAdhesionTreatment.com, and as always, I am working to provide you with the tools you need to get your life back when it comes to abdominal adhesions and other forms of abdominal distress. So today, I am so excited to be here with Marty Ryan. He is an abdominal practitioner in Seattle, Washington, and soon to be in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Pennsylvania. Marty has been one of my most influential teachers, and he has been teaching belly massage and palpatory anatomy seminars across the U.S. since 1998. He has served on the faculty of the Seattle Massage School and the Northwest Institute of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. Having exhausted the learning and certification possibilities in manual belly work, he now teaches it, and in addition to his private practice, um, he has also spent many years learning from and being an assistant to Gil Headley in Gil's um, cadaver courses. So Marty has worked with clients for over 20 years and is one of the most avid learners I have ever met. And Marty, I am so excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Isabel. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so I am very excited to talk to you today with your long and deep experience about bowel obstructions. Ah, this is yes. a huge thing that comes up, I think, for Certainly. Uh, both of us. You know, we've seen this a lot in our practices. <clears throat> and um, just given your level of experience with this, I would love to start out just by asking you, um, Kind of what, overall, if you could, I know it's hard to encapsulate, but if you could sure. encapsulate your experience around this issue of bowel obstructions, if you could just give us an idea of that. Absolutely. Uh, it's a big piece of my practice. And um, generally, I meet people uh, who don't know much about uh, abdominal and visceral massage, and they have already experienced one or a number of bowel obstruction events. They've been to the hospital, they've had the painkillers and the muscle relaxants, and they're back home and they're scared. Uh, they're scared of it happening again, and they don't know when it's going to happen again. And so somehow they find me, or they find you, and then they find me, uh, and we begin to work uh, with specifically the small intestine and the mesentery, but also just the whole nervous system that surrounds this holding pattern um, in the abdomen. So uh, this, I don't know a percentage of my practice, but it's it's a good 25 to 30 percent of my patients uh, are presenting uh, aftermaths of, <clears throat> of bowel obstruction. Right. So, so could you talk about that a little bit? When when would people ex when is it more likely that people will experience bowel obstructions great question um that one is a bit unknown uh, as far as the literature is concerned but mm -hmm. what i've noticed it, is it takes somewhere between six to twelve weeks post-surgery <clears throat> for that uh, sort of gelling up or gumming up event to happen um, and i've certainly seen people who have presented their first bowel obstruction event uh, years after surgery. Yes. Uh, and those folks, from my limited experience, um, have been uh, going through menopause. So, so uh, who knows, right, the that. hormonal storm of menopause could be activating or aggravating something that's been sort of subclinical for a while. I see. Okay. Yeah. So then the next question that jumps to mind is, have you... Like, what is your best recommendation for how to possibly prevent bowel obstructions from happening, right. especially yeah. when you've already had surgery? Yeah, okay. That's a great question, too. Uh, I think it really requires a sort of a, a, a one-two event, uh, one being manual therapy and two being some form of uh, precise movement uh, directed towards the trunk, the core, the abdomen, the pelvis, so that... Uh, the layers of the abdomen and pelvis are able to move better. Uh, and I know you're all over that stuff and really, really great at it. But um, the world at large, I think, needs to uh, serve those folks a little bit better because really the phenomenon of bowel obstruction is, is ubiquitous. And uh, the, the, the movement therapy folks in the world don't know really a lot about it. Right. Um, as, as far as I can see, uh, not neither do the manual therapy folks either. But uh, <laughs> I'm I'm really I'm really 
I really push hard for people to keep moving instead of going into a flexed, fearful, uh, anxious, panic sort of place uh, and try to get more length and more rotation. Yes, absolutely. So one of the things that, that I see happen and that I'm sure is exactly what you're working with as well is that there's so much fear of especially if they've already experienced one bowel obstruction. Somebody will do almost anything that they can think of in order yeah. to prevent another one, another even one. if they don't know exactly what that prevention will look like. Right. So specifically when it comes to the movement piece of it, I find mm -hmm. that very often people are scared to move. They're scared right. to aggravate it. So can you speak to that mm -hmm. a little bit? Sure. Yeah, and, and as far as my side of the fence, they're, they're also scared to have me touch them. Yes. Um, and so we go really slow and, um, uh, sometimes I work through their hands to give them the sense of like, that's the texture that I'm searching for and surveying throughout their abdomen. Um, and you know, the more you breathe and the more you ease and the more you receive this, the more your nervous system is, uh, gets used to it. And, and I just want to say that I'm not ripping anything apart. It's very important. Uh, there's, or I'm not breaking up scar tissue. Uh, I'm, I'm mobilizing scar tissue, uh, and, and I think the the language that our industry has used for years about scar tissue is we we break it, we rip it, we you know, we delaminate it, whatever the words are, um, and that's not what I'm trying to do. I think that's such a powerful thing to say. Um, and I had a storm of thoughts come into my head, so okay, now good. I need to sort through them. <laughs> All right, great. Well, you know, that's good. Yeah. No, I think that's really important because there is this real fear of um, whether they're working with a practitioner or with self-care, however they're going about the hands-on piece of it, um, which I agree. I don't think that you can – and this may be too strong of a statement, but I, in my experience, there's no way to prevent bowel obstructions without the manual work to some degree. Um, and people use liquid diets and things like that. They really try to control their diet in order to just put no resistance through food into their gut, which has varied, as far as I can tell from the people that I've talked to over the years, um, it has sort of a varied effectiveness in order to address it just through you know, a liquid diet. And then, of course, always problems of, well, I want to actually eat food come up, you know. And so there's this real grieving process of, will I ever be able to eat food again? Um, and I think that uh, for a lot of people, this can become kind of like a, it can feel really messy. And I think part of it is coming back to what you just said in your last response was, we create so much fear, and I'm certainly guilty of this as well, in how we talk about what's happening with the manual therapy. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate you bringing up, like, yeah. we're mobilizing, we're not ripping things apart. Um, in my experience, there is sort of a separating out of the tissues, but that doesn't have to feel like being yanked. In fact, Absolutely. there are, you know, and maybe you could speak to this a little bit, there are certainly techniques being actively used in the world with manual therapy as far as these yanking techniques, grabbing onto right. the tissue, yanking in order to separate out the tissues, which I right. actively discourage. But could you talk about you. that maybe in Absolutely. terms of yeah. this? Yeah, there's uh, – so I'm going to roll back to Gil Headley's courses for a bit here and say that I've seen abdominal adhesions in cadavers. Um, and, you know, the evidence of them uh, are the external scars. It's like, okay, they've had abdominal surgery. Let's look for this, the adhesions once we're in there, and they're always there. Um, and some of those adhesions are actually vascular. There, there's v blood vessels in the gummy tissue between two layers of something. Uh, we definitely don't want to rip those apart. Uh, we don't want to rip vessels, okay, for internal bleeding, okay? So I, I have been taught years ago, and, and I do not do this anymore, but I was taught, that, I'm going to put my hand up here, mm -hmm. uh, a, a compression and a twist, like a, oh. make a shape like an at sign, mm -hmm. like whoop, like that, and, and th this is an old osteopathic technique. Right. Um, I have not seen the, the so much of the ripping or the, or the, big lift thing. I do a very gentle lift, mm -hmm. um, but I don't do like this. Uh, it's a, it's really gentle and easy. Um, so yeah, I, this is what I encourage my students to also buy into is that we're not 
ripping things apart. Uh, we go slow. We ease the the resistance, and so we, we you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, and then there are some, there are some patients who almost insist that I do this ripping thing that uh, just get it, you know, just get rid of it. Um, and that's really, I encourage people to not go there. Uh, it's, it's a slow process and it, it may take a bit, but I, you and I have both seen miracles happen with this, you know, mm-hmm. people who've had bowel obstructions once a month or, you know, five or six times a year and then have zero after we started to work with them. And, and I yeah. love that. I so do. I'm really glad you brought up the time piece of this, that it takes sure, time sure. to address this. So um, there's, because people are experiencing significant pain, especially, you know, if they've just come back from the ER with all their pain meds, bowel obstructions are no joke. They are incredibly painful. Right. Um, and they do not want that to happen again. And there's this real sense of urgency. So in that environment, how do you tend to talk to people about the time that it takes to do this? Yeah, right. That's a great question. Um, uh, generally, if they've just gotten back from the hospital, I don't want to see them for a few days, mm-hmm. maybe even a week or so, uh, just because there's so much concern and fear. And, you know, it's trauma. Yeah. Uh, that, and, you know, and, and I, I like to say that that pain, that bowel uh, spasm pain is primary pain. It's like, it's as painful as a root canal. It's just, you know, or that kind of thing. It's like, mm-hmm. I can't think of anything else except for this pain. Um, it's not like a little headache right. or, or I stub my toe and my toe hurts. This is way more than that. Um, and the meds that are given to them in hospital are significant. And yeah. so they need to sort of process that out a little bit as well. Uh, and it may be in that window of time, it's, it's an okay idea to be more liquid than solid food. Um, although I, I, I'm way out of my depth when I'm, when I talk about food. Um, right. So I'm not going to go there too much, but, uh, as far as timing though, I, I like to see people, uh, three or four times, uh, in a month. Mm-hmm. So it, quickly, and then, then we can spread things out as we see the results. Um, and I will say this, that, uh, Folks with one, certainly, certainly more than one, but sometimes even one surgery, they are the they are the least predictable results as far as the first session is concerned. Mm. Some some of those folks are like, you know, I didn't feel too much, and and or it, it felt like, you know, it's pleasant and all that stuff, and then sometimes they'll say, wow, that was very light work will result in a wow, that was you were really in there, um, and that's about mobilizing the scar tissue yes and so uh i go slow at first and and we need to we need to learn how to dance with each other and and it takes a bit of time for that yeah absolutely um so i think one of the fears that people have when bowel obstructions start to happen for them and especially if they've been through more than one um, right. is that this is never going to stop. I'm going to be dealing with this for the rest of my life. So what has your experience been with people as far as if they maintain this sort of consistent course of treatment, especially up front, you know, right. over right. time it lengthens out, of course, but when they really commit in this way, what has been your experience as far as how this resolves for people or doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, my experience has been generally fabulous yeah. in that, um, the ones that are that are dedicated and stay with the manual therapy and the movement pieces as well. Um, I, I have literally run into people that have had a lot of bowel obstructions and then have zero uh, after a bit of time, or they've had, you know, their first one in just months, yeah. and it was half as tender, half as painful. And yeah. so I always think that's a win. That you know, if we can increase the distance between events and have them be less powerful, less painful, um, that's all great. Yeah. What we can't do, however, is predict the future, and right. we can't predict uh, when we can stop. And and it's it's a negotiation. It's like, okay, yeah, you haven't had a bowel obstruction in a year. Maybe we can take some time off. Um, but I, you know, since we can't see them inside from the outside. Uh, we also can't go, oh, you're at stage four or stage two or stage one, uh, whatever those stages would be defined as. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a guessing game on some levels. Sure. And I also find that 
Um, and maybe if you'd speak to this a little bit too, like the, oftentimes it's not just the spasm of the intestines that's causing the bowel obstruction. It's actually sometimes that the, the whole pattern of the belly or even down into the legs or um, even up into the shoulders is actually creating a certain amount of torque or a certain amount right. of tension. And that actually, it may not be the direct cause of the bowel obstructions, but it right. certainly sets the body up to trigger into a bowel obstruction way more easily. So maybe if you could That's just speak to that point. a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I just met a, a woman yesterday in my practice who had uh, large large ovarian cysts removed from both sides. And so the, the cyst and the ovaries and the fallopian tubes were both taken off. Uh, it's between five and 10 centimeters each. So pretty big. Um, <clears throat> And she was noticing, and this was, she's 10 weeks post-surgery, so really the perfect time to start. Um, and she was noticing lots of uh, referring sensations into her legs, medial thighs, uh, down to her knees, she said sometimes, uh, on both uh, both sides of her pelvis. And so we were chatting about this experience of noticing the sort of farther reaching effects. Now, she has not had a bowel obstruction, but... The, the notion of the pelvis and the abdomen relating to the musculoskeletal system is absolutely accurate. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, well, I think we've covered a lot of ground in a very short amount of time. We have. I love that. <laughs> so before we sort of wrap up, is there? do you feel like there's anything else you'd like to say or that we've missed? Yeah. Um, not anything we've missed so much, but, but as far as... Uh, talking to patients is concerned, uh, please uh, start earlier than later with this. And and with your videos and the work that I can do and the folks that we've we've all met, we've both met mm -hmm. that can do this work, um, um, it's, it's, it's really a good idea to start this. Yeah. Um, and the trick, of course, is that the medical community doesn't speak a lot about it. And, right. and and, I, and I'm not here to, to diss the allopaths in the world. Uh, they do a great job, and surgery saves lives. Mm -hmm. And the the sequels of that surgery are sometimes uh, adhesive, uh, bowel obstructions, different sort of pain patterns. Um, and it's really important to get manual therapy for that. Yes, thank you for saying that. I think that's really yeah. important. Um, so, Marty, thank you so much for this. And would you please tell people how to find you, where to go to find sure, sure. you? Sure, sure. Yeah, go to uh, MartyRyanLMP.com. MartyRyanLMP.com. I'm in Seattle, Washington, till uh, my practice will be closing on the 15th of February, 2017. Mm -hmm. And I'm moving to Pittsburgh, and I'm going to reopen a practice April 1st. People Next in Pittsburgh year. are really lucky. They sure are. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Well, hopefully I'm, I'm we'll have... Too. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And hopefully we'll have a chance to connect and maybe we can do a different topic next time once you're in I, Pittsburgh and I, we can... I would love to do that again. Yeah. Thanks, Great. Isabel. Thanks so much, Marty. Have a good day. Okay. Bye.